for, for, for t greater than zero, then u x sub zero. So this time, I will try the following thing. Cosine be cosine six x minus cosine sorry, six pi x. Six not three. Okay, six pi x. Minus cosine of. I think so. Uh, it says point 0.2, right? Yeah, point 0.2. 2 pi x plus 7. We're going to get, try this one, uh, where x is between 0 to 3. And we'll, we'll assume that we've done these questions well enough that we, we kind of know what's going to happen. Uh, but before we do that, uh, let's think about the following. What's the average temperature on this rod of length 3? So here's a rod of length 3. Uh, this one has same number of ups and downs, right? It's like, I don't know how many times it has. Uh, by the way, this has the period of 1 over 6, right? No, 2 pi is 1, 1 third. 1 third is a period, so it actually has 9 period inside this one, zero, three, 3, length 3 bar. Okay. And this one has 1 as its period, so it has 3, three of these inside one, one thing. But what? What's the average temperature if, if you have this? What's the average temperature? Zero. Zero, zero right? Yeah. So this will have average zero, this will have average zero, and this will be seven, right? So you, you kind of expect that uh, it, this plus this is some, some crazy, I, I don't even want to think about it, but plus seven, so overall the average is seven. And my guess is that when you solve this and you take time t going to infinity, uh, your limit at infinity should be 7. Because okay. that's, that's the average temperature you started with. So uh, one of the goals uh, is to not only solve this, but also figure out that the limit will be 7. So let's try that. Solution again. You start with the separation of variables. It says u x t is a function of x times function of t, and then you plug it in here. It's x of x t prime of t equals to zero point two x of x double prime and t of t, and if you divide everything by 0.2 xt, you get uh, t prime over 0.2 t equals to x double prime over x, and using the argument about a function of t equals the function of x, that has to be a constant, and we set this equal to negative lambda. Now the boundary conditions, this boundary condition, we know that it translates to x of 0, x prime of 0 equal to 0, and x prime of 3 equal to 0. Uh, and the argument was that if you plug this into here, you, you get either t of t equal to 0 for all time t, or x of 0 is 0 and, and, and these. But if you set t of t equal to 0, that gives you a trivial solution. So uh, this should be the other way. Yes? 
So this is is this Newman again? Newman? Oh, this is a Newman uh, Neumann condition. Yeah. So Neumann condition. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. That that's why I expect uh, that's why we expect the the uh, limit to infinity will get become seven. If this was a Dirichlet condition, then we would uh, expect the limit to be zero. T going to infinity should be zero in in case of a Dirichlet condition. But this is a Neumann condition, so the limit should be zero. All right, and then uh, uh, again this this part here translates to, end, to, to the endpoint value, eigenvalue, eigenfunction question where if lan, x double prime plus lambda of x <coughs> equal to zero with this boundary condition, and the solution is that you have x equals to uh, cosine n pi x over three, with uh, lambda being what you get if you differentiate this twice. If you differentiate this twice, you're gonna get n squared I squared over nine. And then if you put this one together, you get t prime of 0 0.2 t, t equals to negative lambda, so that gives you t prime equals to zero po negative 0 0.2 lambda t, which gives you that t must be exponential function of negative 0 0.2 lambda t. And because lambda is this, if you plug this in here, and then you get your t as e to the negative 0 0.2 n squared pi squared over 9 of t. And multiplying these two together, you get u x t, which is which is uh, e to the negative 0 0.2 n squared pi squared over 9 t cosine n pi over 3 x. All right, this equation satisfies which of the three? First and last? No. Just the first one? First one and then the second. the second one. This is the boundary condition. See, this this is equivalent to this one if u is a product of these two functions. So uh, you can see that if you plug in 0 uh, for the derivative uh, with respect to x, you're going to get 0 and so and so on. Okay? So these two are satisfied, but not this one. Okay? All right, now we have to set this equal to, uxt is now, uh, uh, it's not just a single one, we, we need to write this as a sum of many, many things. And, and uh, it's often good to write c0 separately, because we know that when n is 0, you just get a constant. So uh, it should be c0 times 1 plus sigma n from 1 through infinity of cn times this thing, e to the negative 0 0.2 n squared pi squared t over 9 times uh, cosine n pi over 3 x. And that has to equal to what? This has to equal to cosine 6 pi x minus cosine 2 pi x plus seven. Now, I want you to notice that for this time, these are in fact already sums of cosines, right? This, this seven being cosine of zero, or you can let seven to be C zero, right? You can let seven to be C zero. Okay, what should C one equal to? Zero. Why? Because if n is one, you have cosine of. Oh, by the way, by the way, I'm not saying this equal to zero. This should be. This is u x zero, right? U x zero. So, 
uh, when you plug in 0 into t, that goes away. So I want this plus cn times cosine of this thing equal to that. And, and when you get rid of this one, e to the 0th power is 1. And you have n equals to 1, what do you have? You have cosine pi x over 3. Do you have cosine pi x over 3? No, not here. So you set c1 as 0. So c0 is 7, c1 is 0. And c2 is 0 for the same reason. Now next question is, for what cn would you get a non-zero value? What's the first value of cn that's non, not 0? Huh? Six. six, very good. Yeah, when n is equal to six, what do you get? Six pi over three is two pi x. So c six is what? Should be same as this one. So c six must be. Huh? No, no. Cosine two pi x is already here because n is six. When n is six, you already have cosine two pi x. So and c six is the coefficient of that. So c six should be. Cn? No, no, I'm setting n equals to 6. C6 should be? Huh? No. When t is equal to 0, that goes away. Maybe. Maybe. Ux0. I'll point to this is c0 plus sigma n equals to 1 to infinity of c n e to the 0. I'm plugging t equal to 0, so e to the 0th power is 1, so that goes away, and you get cosine n pi over 3 t. Okay. Now, the reason that you, you don't understand what's going on is because you can't really see it in this way. If you want to understand what's going on, you really want to write this out, out and see what happens. Yes? Should that be an x, not a t? Oh, thank you, x. Okay. To, to actually see what, what's going on, you should write down the summation. So c is here. When c, n is equal to 1, you get c1 cosine of pi over 3 x, right? Then when n is equal to 2, what do you get? c2 cosine 2 pi over 3x, right? When n is 2. Plus c3 cosine pi x. Plus c4 cosine 4 pi over 3x. Plus c5 cosine 5 pi over x, uh, 5 pi over 3x, and then c6 cosine uh, 2 pi x plus da 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 da, okay? All right, now I want this to equal to this here, with especially this, this one. So c6 should be what? Negative one. Negative one. Now you see it, right? It's obviously. Negative 1 cosine 2 pi x, c6 should be negative 1. If this is negative 1, then you get negative 1 cosine 2 pi x, so they agree. Okay? So c6 should be negative 1. Everything beforehand except c0, these should all be 0 for it to match with this one. Okay? Now, what's the next one that's not 0? Um, 12. 6. 9. No, nine, no. 9. Nine. C9. I need C cosine of 6 pi x. 18. When n is 18, 18 pi over 3 gives you 6 pi, right? So C18 should be what? Hmm? Yeah, it will be positive one. Because that's positive one times this. Okay, and everything else should be 0, right? So that, that actually gives us the following answer. Okay, cool. So we know that everything is 0 except C0, C6, and C18. So we just have to write this summation as a finite sum. It's no longer an infinite sum. It's a finite sum. So let's see what happens. Uh, 
answer is uxt is 7 and then uh, c6 that's minus 1 c6 has uh, e to the negative 0 0.2 times 6 squared n squared pi squared over 9 t uh, of course you can simplify this but I, I don't want to bother times cosine of what? 2 pi x, okay? And then plus e to the negative 0 0.2 times what? 18 squared pi squared over 9 t cosine 6 pi x. Okay, now, now let's think about what happens. Note, as t goes to infinity, what happens to this one? You get e to the negative of something huge, right? <laughs> e to the negative infinity is zero. So this becomes zero, that's becomes ze that becomes zero. So what do you get for uxt? Seven. 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 Uh, implies ux infinity is seven. So when time goes to infinity, uh, you get a uniform heat distribution of seven. That's what we see. Okay.